Joining us now is Ian Reeve. He is the Associate Director for Immigration Research at the Conference Board of Canada. Mr. Reeve, thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So an economic necessity is basically the argument that we're hearing from the minister. Uh, but how true is that statement? What would the consequence be if Canada did not open its doors to new immigration? Consequences would be pretty significant. I mean, uh, even before the pandemic, our research and other research was demonstrating the importance that immigrants played in our labor market and the importance that they were going to continue to play as retirements grew, uh, as you know, the reality of the labor market shifted over time. Uh, so even before the pandemic and, and even before uh, you know, the various changes in our labor market that have followed that, uh, the necessity of, of immigration in our labor market was very clear. Uh, but going forward, you know, with the pandemic, with increased retirements, uh, with the tightness in the labor market that we see now that's reaching historic levels, uh, without growth in immigration, we're simply not going to have the people that we need uh, to meet essential skill needs, uh, to meet skill needs within businesses up and down uh, you know, our sectors in all kinds of different skill levels, and our businesses won't be able to grow, which means our economy won't be able to grow. But half a million each year, it seems like a huge number. We're talking about the, almost the population of a Quebec City or of a Hamilton, Ontario, being admitted to this country each year by 2025. Can Canada really accommodate that number? We already have a housing crisis. Certainly. Uh, so. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a significant growth from numbers that we've even seen forecasted in recent years. Um, but we have to look on the other side, which is the number of people that are leaving the labor market through retirements. That number is also accelerating. You know, we saw the number of retirements decrease slightly and become somewhat repressed during the pandemic. Uh, but now we're going to see a spring effect where there's going to be even more retirements than were already forecasted. Uh, so yes, it's significant growth, uh, but it's growth that has a relationship with the people that are leaving uh, the labor market through retirement. Um, in terms of the impact it's going to have on infrastructure and the sort of capacity of different Canadian communities to uh, take in significant number of immigrants, that's an important aspect of this plan. You know, what I would say is that uh, the growth in the plan is one necessary condition for us to meet our labor market needs. But from here, the government needs to kick on and continue to be innovative. And I should say governments, because the provincial governments have an important role to play here as well. They need to kick on and continue to innovate and find ways to integrate newcomers into a greater number of communities across Canada uh, to spread uh, the places that immigrants and subtle and that's both so that uh, the infrastructure impacts you know whether to housing or to other you know essential health transportation infrastructure is smoother you know it isn't as much of a shock to individual communities and it you know is spread out over a larger number of communities but also so the communities across the country can realize the benefits of immigration because um, our labor market needs aren't just concentrated in our biggest cities they're really spread all across the country in all kinds of communities mm -hmm. now there's also interestingly the this shift in focus more skilled workers less families less refugees. I would imagine there are those out there who like to think of this country as a refuge for others in less fortunate situations. What do you make of that shift? Yeah, it is interesting. Uh, by my calculation, the, the sort of percentage of refugees that are going to come through the system, at least by the end of the current plan, uh, will be comparable. So uh, it is going to be, you know, a relatively you know, similar approach uh, to refugees as we've had in recent years. But the number of family class is indeed decreasing. Um, but I think that's purely tied to what the government is focused on here, which is the economic need. Uh, the reason for the growth in immigration levels here is being driven not by uh, desire to increase our humanitarian objectives or, or desire to to reunite more families, it's being driven by the needs of the labor market. Um, down the road, you know, we may seek to, to find a different equilibrium again once some of the, uh, you know, economic and labor market conditions that we're facing have been addressed uh, through immigration. Um, but it's not a surprise that the government is focusing uh, so so uh, um, pointedly on on economic categories and is diversifying uh, the use of the economic categories that we have at both the federal and provincial level in order to meet a whole variety of different needs. At least that's what be, what's being signaled so far. Mm -hmm. uh, less than a minute, but I do need to ask, what skill sets in particular does this country need uh, to be looking for? really diverse and it's really complicated. Uh, it isn't just at the highest level, which is really where a lot of our immigration program is focused for decades now, you know, the most highly educated, those in professional occupations. We still need a lot of those people in professional services and other related occupations. We also need people in middle, uh, in, in, in sort of middle income uh, positions, such as in the trades and construction um, and in transportation. But then we also need people in food services, hospitality, lots of frontline work to say nothing of healthcare. So um, it's areas all across the economy Economy, which is why a diverse approach that includes uh, innovative programs in the provinces as well as tailored programs at the federal level are what's going to allow us to bring in people uh, that match all of these skill needs. 
what needs to follow from the federal government is continued devotion to settlement services and, and funding that will support immigrants as they settle in Canada and hopefully are economically successful. Ian Reeve, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it today. No problem. Anytime. Take care.